Well, I prefer broad-based index funds and ETFs that cover many sectors all at once for the bulk of my investing. Some of these ETFs from SPDR are on track to absolutely annihilate the rest of the market. So if you're looking to get rich faster, here you go. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the pros and cons of each of these 11 ETFs and then which of the bunch I like best. Within the S&P 500, there are 11 different sectors represented but a lot of them underperform while a few really outperform like technology and healthcare. So in theory, holding those sectors that are gonna outperform might be a very smart move for your portfolio. And I like the idea of holding a sector ETF rather than just like an individual company stock because that brings the risk way down. You get to invest in a bunch of companies all at once rather than just one or two. Near the end of this video, I'll show you how these have compared to the rest of the S&P 5 500 over differing periods of time so that you can make the best decision for your portfolio. Some of these are going to surprise you. And the first sector ETF from SPDR is XLC, which is an ETF for communication services with companies such as Verizon, Google, and Netflix. The current price is $79.74. It has 22 holdings. The expense ratio is 0.09%. There was a point when it was outperforming the S&P 500 and then also underperforming. And right now it's almost at about the same place. The dividend yield is 1.08%. As far as the holdings, it's very high in meta at 24.95% which is amazing if you're holding this now because Meta absolutely crushed it this week. It also is high in Google, Netflix, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, and Disney. As far as performance, since inception, it's at about 7.93% at the net asset value, but over the last five years, it's been closer to 13% on average. Communication services is a huge sector and it's something that a lot of people want to invest a little deeper into and I can see why. The next one here is a very famous one and it's one that's projected to absolutely crush it over the next five to 10 years. And that one is XLV, which is the healthcare sector ETF. XLV has a current price of $141.99. It has 64 total holdings. And again, the expense ratio is 0.09%. It does have a bigger dividend yield than the last one at 1.51%. The holdings involve Eli Lilly & Co, United Health, Johnson & Johnson, Merck & Co, AbbVie, and more. And as far as performance, since inception, it's at 8.75% per year. Over the last 10 years, 11.2%, and over the last five years, 11.45%. These are great numbers, especially if you're able to get that every year on average. Healthcare is just a sector that you know that you can get sustainable growth from. It's not going away anytime soon, and it's just very important. I'm big into health in all ways, and you all know that I used to own a gym and have competed in sports at a high level all my life, so healthy meals are very important to me. You also know that I own a couple businesses, teach full-time at the university, and love to train jujitsu often, so I need solid meals that are already prepared for me so I can grab and go. Cook Unity is the sponsor of this video, and they are the first chef meal delivery service made up of over 70 chefs who believe that great food should be for everyone. Easy and effortless. Choose a subscription plan and select from hundreds of meals each week prepared by award-winning chefs. If you can't or don't have time, Cook Unity is happy to select meals for you based on your taste preferences. Meals are delivered fully cooked, so all you have to do is heat them up. Dinner is done in as little as five minutes. No more cleanup and meal planning. My shipment came in perfect and ready to stock me up for the week. And I've tried a couple of these meal prep services before, and the food just doesn't taste too good, but this one, absolutely tasted like restaurant quality. My favorites so far are the Nikkei style steak fajitas from chef Brandon Kita. Seriously might be the best steak fajitas I've ever had. The bulgogi with cucumber kimchi from chef Esther Choi was amazing. And the grilled grass-fed ribeye steak, also from Chef Brandon Kita. The subscription is super flexible, so you can choose from 4 to 16 meals a week. Meal plans are flexible and commitment-free. You could skip deliveries, pause, or cancel anytime. Enjoy restaurant-quality meals for a fraction of the price. 
Subscriptions start as low as $11 per meal. Just go to cookunity.com slash professor50 or click the link that's right down in the description and use my code professor50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals to try them for yourselves. Now the third ETF on this list is XLP, which is consumer staples like Procter & Gamble and PepsiCo. It has a current price of $74.17. There's 38 total holdings here, and the expense ratio is 0.09%. This one has a very nice dividend of 2.53%. The holdings here are Procter & Gamble, Costco, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Walmart. As far as performance, since inception, a little bit lower at 6.57, which makes sense for consumer staples. Over the last 10 years, about 8.12% and over the last five years, over 10%. Consumer staples aren't super exciting, but they are definitely one that's gonna keep your portfolio nice and safe. The next one I'm gonna go over is called XLY, and this one is consumer discretionary, like Starbucks, Nike, and Amazon. XLY has a current price of $177.32. This one has 38 total holdings. The expense ratio is 0.09%. The dividend on this is 0.78%. Like I said before, it holds companies like Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, McDonald's, Lowe's, Nike, and Starbucks. As far as performance, this has been a very solid one since inception, 9.5% per year. Over the last 10 years, 11.66%, and over the last five years, 13.62%. Consumer discretionary has been crushing it, and I do like this one a lot. This next one is always an exciting one, and one that a lot of you should definitely take a little bit deeper of a look into, because this isn't going away anytime soon and there's a lot of new changes happening in this industry that's gonna make for some exciting investments. But the hard part about this is it's hard to pick which individual company is gonna be the one that really skyrockets. So having a sector ETF that invests in a bunch of them definitely ups your odds. This ETF is XLE and this is the energy sector ETF. XLE has a current price of 83.52. It has 23 total holdings. The expense ratio is 0.09%. This dividend yield is 3.39%, which is super high and solid, especially for these types of companies. As far as holdings, a huge portion is Exxon. Another huge portion is Chevron which is great because those are the top two in my opinion, but there's also Philips 66 and Valero, a bunch of other really good energy companies. As far as performance is concerned, since inception, it's at 7.88%. The last 10 years haven't been great, but recently and more recently, it's really been going well. So the last five years was 13.42% and in the last three years was 35%. So it's good to look at the total picture there. The energy sector just has companies and products that will always need and so that's a really really safe one as well. Next is XLF and this one has traditionally been very sustainable as well. And this ETF has financial companies like JP Morgan, American Express, and Berkshire Hathaway. XLF has a current price of $38.98. There's 72 total holdings here, and again, the expense ratio is 0.09%. The dividend yield for this one is 1.34%. Its holdings, like I said, number one in the biggest one here is Berkshire Hathaway, which is one of my favorite companies in all of the world. JP Morgan, Visa, MasterCard, Bank of America, even S&P Global Inc. As far as performance, since inception, it's looked at about 5%. The last 10 years, closer to 10%, and the last five years at 11.83%. Financials, again, is just a sector that we're always going to need, always going to use, and it's one that you can pretty much forecast and understand that you're gonna stay somewhat stable with that type of growth. Next on this list is one that a lot of people overlook, and this one's called XLI, and it's industrials. And this one holds companies such as Caterpillar and UPS. XLI has a current price of $115.58. It holds 78 different companies, and the expense ratio is 0.09%. The dividend yield here is 1.59%. The holdings in XLI are Caterpillar, Union Pacific, General Electric, Uber, RTX, Honeywell, Boeing, as far as performance, it's actually done really, really well. Since inception, 8.61%. Over the last 10 years, 10.17%. And over the last five years, 14% per year. 
that's pretty solid. Next on this list is XLB, which is materials sector ETF with companies like Sherman Williams and PPG. XLB has a current price of $83.09. There's 28 total holdings here, same expense ratio as we've seen. The dividend yield is right near 2%, which is very nice. The companies that it holds is Lind, Sherwin Williams, Air Products and Chemicals, Freeport, Ecolab, Nucor. These are the types of ETFs though that really help balance out your portfolio because you probably have a bunch of companies and things in the technology sector or healthcare. And so it might be good to have something that's a little bit different to again, balance everything out. And speaking of boring, this one is probably the most boring, but also the most sustainable and probably the least volatile. In investing, Boring is good. This ETF is XLU, and this is the utility sector ETF. Pretty much every financial analyst is saying to increase your holdings in utilities if we're ever going to see a recession. That's the best time to be holding utilities because while everything else crashes, that's gonna stay pretty stable. XLU has a current price of $61.49. They have 28 total holdings, an expense ratio of 0.09%. Very nice dividend yield, which again, keeps everything nice and sustainable and gives you cash flow. The portfolio holdings include NextEra Energy, Southern Co, Duke Energy, Sempra, American Electrical Power. As far as performance, it hasn't been great, but also hasn't been bad, 6.84% on average over the last 10 years, almost 9%. Now this next one is a really, really good one for most of you to diversify your portfolio into a whole different asset class because this one is all about real estate and this one's called XLRE. The real estate sector ETF has a current price of $38.31. There's 31 total holdings here at an expense ratio of 0.09%. Very nice dividend as well at 3.46%. As far as the holdings, the top ones are are Prologis Inc., American Tower Corp., Equinix, Well Tower, Crown Castle, and Realty Income. Performance-wise since inception has been about 7.25% per year and over the last five years, almost 9%. Having that type of price appreciation along with that pretty nice dividend yield it's a pretty good one to consider for your portfolio. And now last on this list, definitely not least, probably the one you've been waiting for and probably the one that you're already invested in because this is definitely the most solid one out of all of them on this list. And this is XLK, the technology ETF. I've talked about it on this channel before and I actually really, really like this sector ETF. XLK has a current price of $202.24. It has 64 total holdings with an expense ratio of 0.09%. Small dividend yield, but at least something at 0.72%. The holdings here are very familiar with Microsoft and Apple taking up a huge portion then we have NVIDIA, Broadcom, Adobe, Advanced Micro Devices, Salesforce, and Oracle, rounding out that top 10. Performance has been crazy. Since inception, 8.9%, but what we care about is right now. Over the last 10 years, almost 20% per year. Over the last five years, almost 26% per year on average. In this last three years is 14.9 because we had a down year two years ago. Obviously technology is doing nothing but absolutely crushing it in every place. And so this one is a great one, but you wanna curb your enthusiasm just a little bit because you are probably investing in most of those companies in other ETFs. So adding this one in might just add fund overlap to what you already are invested in. So make sure to take that into consideration. So let's look at how each one is done compared to each other and then also how it's done compared to the S&P 500. Then I'm gonna explain exactly how you should invest for the most success with these sector ETFs. Looking at the sector tracker here, we can look at year to date. The S&P 500 index is up 3.96 and some of these are up a lot more and some of them are down a lot more than where the S&P 500 is. So communication services is up at 9.74%, and then technology is up about 5%. I would have thought technology would be a little bit higher. Utilities, real estate, materials, energy, and consumer discretionary are all down year to date, but it's only been about a month. Over the last year, the S&P 500 is up a little over 18%. Communication services almost doubled that. And then technology there, as expected, has been crushing it. Utilities is down, real estate is down, 
and that makes sense. Looking even more broad at the five year, the S&P 500 has gone up about 83%. Close to that would be communication services, consumer discretionary to a certain extent, and then of course, technology has absolutely blown that out of the water. But I think we all knew that going into this. Some sectors have really underperformed like real estate, utilities, and even energy. So what does all that mean? Basically what you're doing when you're looking at something like that is trying to figure out which type of sectors you're going to add into what you already have. Hopefully you're already investing in the three fund portfolio that I always talk about on this channel, or at the very least you're investing in a broad based index, something like the S&P 500 or the total US stock market. The only reason you would ever add in one of these sector ETFs is if you think one specific sector is just going to crush it over the next five years or 10 years, and so you should have more of that. Because it's totally okay for you to have the S&P 500, which has all of these companies that we just talked about, and then to add in that one of those sectors, like if you really think technology is just going to continue to go crazy, then you have the S&P 500 and then you add in XLK on top of that. Yes, you're investing in those companies already, but now you're just double investing in those specific ones because you wanna double down on that specifically. That's how you kind of customize your portfolio while keeping your risk pretty low. For those of you that have portfolios that are very high in technology, it might be a smart idea to use some of these sectors that are a little bit more boring something like utilities, maybe even healthcare, to just balance things out. Unfortunately, there's not a one size fits all answer for this or in anything in investing. So make sure and do your research and figure out what might be best for your investing strategy with your investing goals. Of this list, my favorite is obviously XLK, but I do definitely like XLC, which was the communication services one, and XLY, which was the consumer discretionary one. I think purely looking at these 11, those would be my top top three and my favorites. Make sure you watch this video next to continue that financial education and to get you to financial freedom super fast.